This here is the 2014 MacBook Pro and it's officially 10 years since it was released. Let's find out, is it still worth it in 2024? Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! What's up, my name is Linus and welcome. Now, today we have the 2014 MacBook Pro and we're just trying to find out, is it still worth it 10 years after it was released? Now, this a particular MacBook was released in 2014 and this here is the 15 inch uh, variant of it. So this basically is from this to that when you measure diagonally right there, that gives you 15 inches and it's just an amazing machine. Now, is it still worth it in 2024? Let's first start off looking at the design. Now, I must say that this MacBook has aged really gracefully. Um, when you look at it at first glance, you can't really notice that it's actually a 10-year-old machine. The design still looks good, it still looks pristine, it still looks like something really premium. You know, this entire aluminum uh, body, aluminum, aluminum, alu um, the aluminum uh, for the Americans and aluminum for the British um, casing over here just makes it elegant and makes it really look look really really nice now that there is a very good pro to it and it just gives it this nice feel and you know corporate feel it's a kind of laptop you know you pull out at a meeting and you feel you know you've got something really worth it in your hands next thing um where i would say this is still really worth it is connectivity ports this particular macbook came from an era when apple was still putting quite a lot of ports on their laptops as you can see we have um Firewire here basically can connect anything, be, be it a hard drive. I haven't really seen a hard drive Firewire in a long time. Anyways, you have uh, two Firewire ports. You have a USB Type A uh, on this side, and then on the other side you have another USB Type A and an HDMI uh, port for you know outputting your video, and then an SD card slot, which just gave it quite a good amount of connectivity. Even in today, modern day and age, you know, in 2024, this connectivity option still feel um, really useful. Apart from the firewire, I don't know what happened to that. Apart from connecting an external display through firewire, I haven't really seen any other device that uses firewire. Anyway, apart from that, it still actually still performs really, really great. And now just talking about that, let's get to performance. This particular variant that I have is the i7 uh, model coming with uh, 16 GB of uh, RAM that is soldered to the board. And then now depending on which one you pick up, uh, this particular one that I have has the Intel Iris Pro. So it does not have the dedicated graphics. And then it also came with the 128 GB SSD. Now, in terms of performance, these specifications, when you look at them, are actually still good. Um, you can get a lot done with these particular specs. You can uh, type out to work very peacefully. Uh, you can use it as an office machine, you know, for your spreadsheets and all of that. And it will not lag. It will not disappoint you in that field. Now, if you are a creative and you want to start using this machine, maybe for stuff like video editing, uh, photo editing and stuff like that, that's where things start getting a little bit tricky. For instance, um, if you're doing... Um, your photo editing using Photoshop or Adobe Lightroom. So it will do it very, very well, no problem. When you switch to the video side of things, if you're editing 1080p, 1080p, no problem, you can edit it, scrub through properly, and especially if you're using Final Cut, because Final Cut is more tuned to Mac than any other, um, than all the other apps like Premiere Pro and stuff, Final Cut is a little bit more optimized. You can scrub and edit and render out with no problem. When you switch to 4K, 4K editing 4K on this uh, 2014 uh, MacBook Pro gets a little bit tricky. Yes, you can scrub through your video properly. Uh, yes, you get to cut and put all those effects and all that without it necessarily hanging, especially if you're using proxies. But then when it comes to rendering is when you actually get to test your patience. An eight minute video is going to take you roughly 45 to an hour to export for this particular type but i guess because it doesn't have the graphics card uh that is an a dedicated graphics card this one's running on intel iris pro i'm yet to try it out on one with a dedicated graphics card and see what the difference is but with the intel iris pro version um exporting 4k is going to take about an hour to export about a five to seven minute video but editing the cutting the scrubbing all that wonderful so in terms of performance in 2024 this machine still actually does get a lot of work done now the other thing i should look at is the keyboard on this particular macbook the keyboard on the earlier macbook pros were just a perfect perfect hit the typing on them feels good they're backlit so even in 2024 um this 2014 
MacBook Pro has a keyboard that is still a delight to use. I normally use this to type out my work and it is just an absolute blessing. The trackpad is also big enough and it still supports those gestures and it's something really amazing and great to use. So as a daily running machine, as something that you use every single, uh, every single day, the 2014 MacBook Pro will actually do you quite well in 2024. Now let's look at the downsides, where it actually does fall short. Number one in this particular case would be upgradability. Now, 2014 and uh, above, things started getting tricky in terms of upgradability of the internals of MacBooks. Now, for the 2014, basically the only thing you can upgrade on here is the SSD. And even that, when you go to change the SSD, Mac use the particular type of uh, plug uh, for the SSD that is not the usual plug that you can find all over the market So when you go looking for an SSD upgrade you either have to get an adapter for it Or you're going to have to buy a one which is exactly uh, From Mac or from Apple which will be a little bit more costly now that there is another uh, Downside to it in terms of upgradability all you can upgrade is the SSD and when you go looking for an SSD It has that proprietary Mac. I know plugin it's an m2 but different kind of plugin that is not with you know common with what the uh, windows counterparts use so you either have to buy a mac branded one or buy the adapter to adapt it to normal nvme for you to plug in an ssd so as far as upgradability is concerned that is all you can upgrade so the other downside in this particular case would be upgradability in terms of operating system now the 2014 macbook pro i think maxes out at uh, mac os big sir and for many people it will work just perfectly because you know the apps will still run especially if you have um logins to a higher version and you can always download the version that works with big sir and uh you're good to go but if you want to push it a little bit higher basically big size as far as it will go but of course like patching tools like open core legacy patcher you can push it to the you know the highest and greatest uh, operating system i've seen people push theirs up to about sonoma but in this particular case mine i've upgraded it up to ventura so it gives me a little bit of flexibility in that i can go to app store and download uh, supported applications and also still get to use the system really really well and apart from that really there is not much one can put down as far as the 2014 MacBook Pros are concerned. They are actually great machines built well, they look good, and they actually will serve you really, really great. So that brings us to the question of, should you buy one in 2024? Now, my answer to this would be yes. Reason being one, the prices have dropped on these older MacBooks ever since the Apple switched over to the M line of chips these intel machines have actually gotten a lot cheaper so you can get this up at a really good good price and comparing it to maybe a windows machine in around the same price range you just can't beat you know the deal on this particular guy here this year will come at a better better deal so should you buy it definitely yes you should the prices have actually dropped and it will be a machine that will actually serve you really really well it will be a machine that will actually get your work done if you're a student or even if you're creative and you're trying to get a machine, you know, to utilize for like video editing and photo editing and uh, graphics, minor graphics, nothing really too heavy, uh, it will actually get the job done. Now, all I can say is if you're into that field of uh, creativity and you want something that can edit video and do some kind of heavy stuff, look out for one that has an inbuilt um, dedicated graphics card, especially the AMD versions. That graphics card will give you a little bit of boost in what you're looking for in terms of rendering your projects and just giving you a better, smoother experience. If you get the best model, like I have the Intel Iris Pro, yes, it will get the job done, but it will really be uh, kind of struggling because you will feel it. The fans will be screaming at you. Um, of course, the system won't freeze up, but you will feel like you will feel like you're punishing the machines. The fan will be screaming at the top of its capacity, and then render times will really take quite a good good amount of time. Like I said, rendering of five to seven minute 4K video took me about an hour to do. So imagine the patience in there. Well, there you have it. A uh, little bit of a roundup about the. 2014 macbook pro in 2024 should you buy one i believe you should it actually is a good purchase right there and a little bit of the upsides and the downsides 
of one i believe uh this here is something that you can add to you know your arsenal of machines in case you're looking for a machine this one highly recommended it does actually go into the recommended list thank you so much for watching and i shall see you in the next one bye bye